do we want to just stroll down memory lane real quick and think back to some mm -hmm. of the challenges that we really enjoyed? If only we knew somebody that yeah. had done all the challenges. Yeah, would be helpful for sure. Wait a minute. Is that is that the shithole mole? Ding dong. Whoa. <laughs> Wait a second. Are you allowed Whoa! to call it that? Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> the shithole mold. Uh, I'm in the flesh. Jacob is here. <laughs> yes. Welcome to the podcast, Jacob. Oh, thank you guys. Sorry, I'm at work right now. I don't have headphones. I hope it sounds okay. You sound great. You're good. Yeah, You're great. good. Perfect. Uh, big pop in the chat as this is not a prank, not a bit. We have Jacob from the mall with us. Jacob, how is it now that you can just talk about it? You don't have to lie about anything. You can talk about what your experience was. Everybody knows what's up. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, it was a kept secret for so long. I mean, the production happened, you know, summer of 2021. But the casting process, you know, we started that. Some people started it like at the end of 2020. I got pulled in at the beginning of 2021. And now here we are almost at the end of 2022. It's been like a year and a half. So yeah, wow. it has been such a long secret. And then once it dropped, oh my goodness, the DMs and the people coming at me with questions and asking me all sorts of things. It, <laughs> I'm finally glad the secrets are over and I can talk freely. Yeah. It's a, like hurry up and like it's like wait and hurry up because you're sitting on the secret for so long and then it's three weeks of the mole. So uh, from like slow <laughs> as molasses to as fast as humanly possible. Yeah, absolutely. It's hurry up and wait. Exactly. Yeah. Jacob, what has the reception uh, been like from all of the people that have uh, watched the show over these last couple of weeks? You know, I'll tell you it has been phenomenal. I did not expect the love and support that I got in the fan base that I acquired from the show. And something I wasn't surprised of is that there's a lot of people who I was just on another um, chat. I heard a marathon Twitter spaces. Yes. <laughs> yes. I was on a Twitter space and it was funny because a lot of the cast was jumping in and a lot of the people were like, Jacob, we didn't know you were this cool and nice of a person. You've got some comedic relief and you're actually genuine to talk to. And I'm like, I don't know if I should be offended, but I'm honored <laughs> that I can clear my own name, you know? You know, uh, towards the end of the show, uh, that it was hard to tell uh, if you and Will uh, actually did uh, get along or if you were getting on each other's nerves. Uh, what was that relationship like? Will and I had the relationship of brotherly love. You know, it would be like your two best friends who just poke at each other and give each other so much crap all the time that you just say mean things to each other. You know how guys are. And that's the exact relationship we had. We would just pick on each other constantly. We loved each other. It was, it was, we loved to hate on each other. It's a perfect way to put it. Now, the power of editing, so much of the show was different than what actually happened. But they did a phenomenal job. The show, 10 out of 10. And they don't show a whole lot of the relationship where me and Will picked on each other. They showed him picking on me a lot, but <laughs> I didn't get a banter with him as much. Yeah, well, now's your chance. You're live on a podcast. Hundreds of people watching you live. Pick on Will. Drag <laughs> him. Oh, the where do I begin? Me. He's he's such an easy target. I mean, he's such a diva that I could say so many things. <laughs> yeah, um, we've how, been uh, we've been standing up for each other and giving each other some crap on Twitter. It's quite fun. How about Joy? Uh, because it seemed like it got a little hot with Joy. There is the iconic. I think you're the shithole mole. Uh, mm -hmm. we've, we've been hearing a little bit. There's, there's some chatter that some of that you had, you'd been, uh, prepared for by joy. Is that right? Do you want to give your side of the story? Yeah. First of all, I want to say, I'm sorry for my presentation wearing a work shirt. And my hair looks horrible. I'm you on a 24 fantastic. hour shift. Contrary to what a lot of the internet believes, I really am a firefighter. That's my real <laughs> job. Mm -hmm. But, um, so this was released on a press release that joy did with Netflix, um, this past week. So I'm going to go ahead and talk freely about it. Joy and I are really upset that our relationship wasn't shown 
in the show because her and I had an alliance together since episode two, where the big red button mission going into the Great Barrier Reef, her and I were working together. Now, throughout every episode, you know, there's a lot of content that got missed where the players would get together and we would talk, you know, whether it be on the beach or, you know, in a hotel room, walking down the street, they would want to see everybody's gameplay. And every time that happened when we weren't in a mission, they would say, all right, Jacob and Joy, we need to get you guys together because they knew about our alliance and they knew that we were trying to manipulate the other players, get other players out of the game. Well, we did that through the whole show. And when it came time to the infamous shithole mole, we had people who were suspecting us. And she said, we need to have a fight. We need to throw some people off our trail. Some of the players suspect that we're working together. She's like, I'm going to call you out at dinner tonight. And I said, okay. I said, I'll call you out. I said, we'll fight. And she's like, yep, let's do it. I didn't realize we were going that hard until it actually happened. So I had to act very shocked and very angry. And I really was because I had no idea she was going to say those things. So I'm scratching <laughs> my head going, how do I compete with this? Holy shit. Okay. So I came back at her and afterwards we were like, oh, you're the poop on my shoe. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, Hey, if she's following the term shit, I'm just going to take it one more, one more, <laughs> you know, foot length. And so afterwards we were like, Oh, that was awesome. Good job. Yeah. We, we really did that good. And it was fun. It was a blast. Uh, we have a question in the chat right now from Angela who is asking, uh, Jacob, did you, did you throw the car ride with joy? Did you throw that challenge? What really happened there? Oh, okay. The car ride. So that was an interesting challenge. Um, joy and I had both come off of, lost missions so we both had failed in a previous mission and we already you know we wanted to work together because of our alliance and because we fit well together and we decided yeah let's do this car mission well neither of us threw it we both tried really hard to bring money to the pot for our team and that's what we wanted unfortunately it didn't end that way you know Joy's getting a lot of heat on social medias, especially like Twitter, because of her job as a pilot and reading maps. Well, you got to take into consideration the maps that the show gives us aren't legit real maps. You know, the map that we had to follow for the car mission was a map with a little black drawing with uh, little caricatures of cars and mailboxes. And it was like, hey, you need to go up to this house number and here's your first mailbox. You know, it was completely crazy that we had to look at this map that wasn't 100 accurate we were under a speed restriction i mean i wasn't allowed to go a certain speed i got yelled at a lot for exceeding that <laughs> how but, fast did you go how, how much did you push it I, too much um <laughs> i don't know the terms in kilometers uh because that's how they justify their speeds over there kilometers per hour but i remember at some points they strictly like production got on and yelled at me and said, Jacob, you were going way too fast. You need to slow down. I might've been pushing 60 at one point and they're like, stop it. Stop it. You can't, this is ridiculous. You know, drive a train. What are you supposed to do? Exactly. I got to beat a train. Come on. Let me, I am a professional driver. I'm supposed to go places fast. Let mm -hmm. me do my job. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we've got this from Ryan in the chat as well. Ryan says, Jacob, how was the pizza pigeon challenge? I was cracking up when there ended up being three pizza dudes that you had to follow. And what uh, happened to the chili? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, what was with the chili? I don't think that was ever really expressed on the show. I, you know, that was such an annoying challenge. It was like a circus. We walk into this challenge. Will and I were working together, and we were told, you go to this pizzeria, and you got to get to Avery. Good luck. Okay, so we started at the bottom. We're like, there's got to be a clue here somewhere. Come to find out, you know, we get the phone. And so we were just kind of looking around until Avery called us. And we're like, holy cow, the phone works. And that's the only thing the phone was for was to receive calls. I know a lot of people are saying, why didn't you call her back and give her the phone number on the box? Mm -hmm. And Will and I are just trying to clarify it would only take incoming calls. We weren't allowed to call Avery. And it was just uh, super confusing. It took us forever to figure it out. And I'm looking at these pizza boxes going, we're missing something. It's right in front of our face. And sure enough, I'm like, there's a number on this. Maybe we should tell Avery to place an order. And she had that order, a uh, large pepperoni pizza with chili. Heck, I don't know. I'll tell you one thing, though. When that pizza got there, it was hard as a rock and black. <laughs> so oh. she left it in the oven for the whole time we were doing this challenge. 
Poor Jimmy. His wow. pizza was not edible. Yeah. That's incredible. I, I had a I had a question about that actually. Were you not allowed to tell Avery the number on the side of the box? Uh, yeah, so I was going to, but then she hung up on me. If you remember yeah, in the episode, she, hung she up goes so quick. She goes, There's no number. I gotta call the girls. Click. And I look at Will and he looks at me. I'm like, what the hell? And he's like, you're the one that put her there. I'm like, eh, yeah, I did vote for her to be in that position. Okay, whatever. But And then she called and placed the order. And you see me and Will go, what is that? I said, I bet it's Avery placing a pizza order. And then she calls us and says, I just placed an order. We're like, oh, we're so surprised. Uh, it was annoying. It was very annoying. Can I ask you about the, uh, the two truths and a lie? Uh, and I would love to know, where did you come up with that? Like, like the, the grub that wasn't real. Did you watch a Survivor Challenge? Yeah. You're among friends That's here. Nice you can tell us the truth. And was it not that bad or was it disgusting? <laughs> yeah. Um. So the two truths and a lie was an interesting mission because, again, I'll say that's the power of editing. Um. They made me look like a complete idiot on my lie and made it look so blatantly obvious that I was lying. And we had three minutes to prove to them that we were telling the truth. And I think they only shown about 30 seconds of it cut up, but um, the show was 100% not scripted. Everything that we did was all of us. We had complete control of the game. And the only time I know of something that was like, Hey, this is something that you should say was the Wichita grub because it went along the same lines of what joy and Avery did because you know Avery walked on fire joy um had a huge snake around her neck which would have freaked me out I would have been like nope not doing it but anyways so they're like this is something that you should investigate and this should be something that you should look up because it is an aboriginal delicacy that they do in Australia and it was so cool to pay tribute to that because I'd never heard of it and I'd never even thought it was a thing but that is something that they do in australia especially in the aboriginal tribes it was really cool sucks that i was made to look like a liar and that was something also they didn't show when i got in the car to go start this mission i straight up said none of these people are going to believe me they all think i'm liars already i'm going to fail this mission come on i'm a guy so i got to come up with this extensive lie and sure enough greg was the first one he's like i can read jacob like a book he's lying damn you greg yeah but who's laughing after that Greg goes home like immediately. Greg did go home that night. Yeah. Yeah. They did make it look like everybody was lying, to be fair, in the edit at least. Yeah, at least <laughs> everybody story seemed particularly believable. <laughs> everybody had some form of lie, so that was really cool. I was like, okay, I don't look completely ridiculous. Um, this is from TJ in the chat. TJ is saying, Who did Jacob suspect? Were you enjoy both voting for Will or were you just hedging the whole time? Uh, Jacob, did you have a leading candidate along the way uh, towards the end? Were you and Joy hovering around the same person? She ultimately thinks it's Will in the final. Yeah, um, great question. I originally started out the game voting for Joy. And then we got close, connected, realized neither of us were the mole. We put our trust in one another. And at that point, we sat down together, narrowed it down, and we were on the Will train. Uh, Will's the reason I got eliminated and he's the reason Joy got eliminated. What were you seeing that we weren't seeing? Because I think that the way that the show is presented made it really hard for us to imagine a world where Will was trying to take money out of the pot. So what was it that you were having boots on the ground that made you feel like Will's the guy? Being in the game, um, the edit makes Will kind of look, you know, like a hero. He won. So they, he has, he looks very oh, he good. He got the winner edit. <laughs> he got the winner edit. Oh, but um, he did act like that most of the time. You know, he was the go-getter. He was the gung-ho guy. And that is what set us off. We're like, he is trying so hard to look so good. And he is doing everything he can to put himself in a position of power, be a leader. It's like, and when you're engrossed in this game, your wheels are constantly turning. And you're always thinking further down the line of possibilities. And that was the biggest one that got Joy and I. It was like, this guy's putting on a front. This guy's staging. He's trying too hard. He's trying everything he can to put money in, take money out, and be the hero of it all. You know, we had it narrowed down to him, and not a single person looked at Kasi. I mean, <laughs> until the end when Will did. I'll tell you, in the finale, we're all wishing that they would have shown more of our finale because Alex, the host, gave some statistics. 
she said there was only two people that voted for uh, Kasi. It was Sandy in, I believe, the Great Barrier Reef. And then it was Will at the end. And wow. those were the only two players who ever gave Kasi a vote on the quiz. Um, the other cool scenario, or I'm sorry, the other cool statistic she gave was the person who had the most votes to be the mole. And it was me. Whoa. So I felt good. I felt good about that one. Yeah. What That's you- fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit more about uh, how Kasi was able to snow uh, all of the players in the game uh, so much? Because in the edited show, a lot of people uh, seem to come to the conclusion that Kasi was the mole. But for all of you who are out there, uh, it seems like that she really did a good job of keeping you all guessing. Yeah. Um, Kasi was, you know, goofy. She She put on the front that she was just ditzy and fun going and there to have a good time she was just always joking around always playing pranks always having fun with everybody you know and everybody just kind of cast her aside and said you know what she's just goofy (laughs) she's here to have fun she enjoys company with everybody we all interrogated her and just never looked twice at her she did a good job uh, JJ asks, uh, talk about the money heist. Did you miscount the money on purpose, Jacob? Did Avery catch you in the act? <laughs> no, she did not. I did not purposefully throw that by any means. I mean, I think we had, what, eight different currencies of bills. And so there was thousands and thousands of pieces of money, paper money laying there from all these different countries. And our goal was to get them stacked, get them separated. And here's the thing that I understand why they made me look that way and why they put so much, cast so much shade on me as screwing up that money counting because they were building me up to look like the mole up until the point I was eliminated and it gave a big shock. Oh my goodness. And so for that mission, obviously they wanted to put Avery suspicion, but what you don't see is I had just as much suspicion on Avery for that mission because maybe my stacks were off by a dollar or two. Fine. You know, I was dealing with so much money. It could have easily happened that one or two of them stuck together or I counted extra, but I uh, don't see how that would equal $600 in a mishap of the end game, you know, when Alex said you guys were off by like 600 some dollars, I don't remember the exact change, but that couldn't have been for me misplacing a dollar or two here. What I seen was when Sandy Avery and I were putting all the money in the bag, um, Avery put in another stack of cash. And I asked, I was like, wait, no, that doesn't go in there. And her and Sandy, we were all so confused at that point because our time was running out. We're like, no, this, this, this goes in here, this stack and this stack. I'm like, I don't think that stack goes in there. I'm like, well, yeah, no, this goes in. So it was just super mass confusion. And in my post-interview, you know how we always did the did the interviews where we're sitting in front of that brick wall. Um, most of my questions were towards how Avery uh, sabotaged that mission or how Pranav sabotaged that mission, but they didn't show any of that. So it looked like I was the saboteur, but I really did not. If I did, it was accidental poor math skills. Yeah. Uh, a lot of pressure in the moment too so you know. oh, it was horrible that was a, uh, that was a horrible mission i hated every minute of it it was very fun to watch i'm sorry for your struggle <laughs> but for us we had a great time to be totally honest with you as uh, long as everybody got a good laugh we I'm did happy. we had a good time it was really fun uh this is in the chat from winnie winnie wants you to talk more about your alliance with with joy that wasn't really shown but specifically i think this is fun how did you know you could trust her even when she bids the twenty five thousand dollars how do you live with that afterwards? What was your reaction to everything? I had no idea she was going to do that. And none of us did because they took us up into that room to do the bidding and check the dossiers, everything. We were kept so far away from each other because I think they knew shit was about to hit the fan. And we didn't have a chance to talk about that until after the fact Alex revealed it all. And what I did was after she said, Joy, bet the $25,000 and everybody went nuts Alex said, I'm going to give you guys some time to discuss, you know, you guys can separate, break up, talk, you know, do whatever you need. So they had cameras everywhere because everybody was just kind of doing their own thing, discussing. I straight up said, I need to talk to Joy outside privately. So I'm glad we're on camera because I'm going to show you a lot of hand movements here. 
Um, Joy and I walked outside and she was so nervous. She's like, Jacob, I'm so sorry. Are you mad at me? Are you angry at me for doing this? And I made sure I was facing everybody inside. And I said, Joy, I'm going to act like I'm really mad at you and I'm going to act like I'm yelling and I'm throwing my hands and I'm pissed off. I said, but no, this is a great move for us. This is a good game play. I said, for the I, audio I, listeners, Jacob is wildly gesticulating <laughs> with his hands right now. They're going everywhere. <laughs> I'm so sorry, audio listeners. I did not know that was a thing. No, I it's apologize. great. No, you're perfect. We're narrating. I'm waving my arms dramatically and I'm pointing up into the sky like I'm yelling at Joy. Um, and so I told her, I said, I came here with pretty much nothing. I said, if I go home with a dollar as a winner, that's still a win for me. I said, this is great for our gameplay. I'm not mad at you. It's going to be a hell of a night though, because everybody's pissed off at you. Let's go back inside. Don't worry about it. And she was like, Oh my God, thank you. And I really wish they would have showed that. Cause it was hilarious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anything more that was spent uh, around that moment in the mall uh, would have been, would have been great for me uh, for sure. Uh, this is from uh, Tajila in the chat. Uh, that this was a question for you, Jacob. On the show, you said that Australia was your first international trip. Which country would you like to go to next? Now that you have a passport, where are you going? Where's next on the list? Wherever they're shooting the mole season two, <laughs> wherever my next Belgium? job comes. <laughs> if I can get a gig somewhere else, I'm gone. Take me. Uh, yeah, I. Uh, I'd never, I'd never even been to Canada or Mexico, you know, and I live in Ohio. I had to get a passport just for the show. And here I go across the world. Um, Especially at I, the time that you're, you're getting to go too, right? You know, like world shut down. This is a huge adventure in the middle of everything. Right. It was insane that we were actually having clearance to get there. Now it was horrible getting into the country, quarantining for two weeks and being, foreigners but it was still the adventure of a lifetime i would give anything to do it all again in my exit interview you seen me tearing up you know i was like i i got to do this amazing thing um if i had to pick somewhere apparently my fan base that i'm getting all sorts of dms are from the philippines uh just all over the world i'm getting messages from all over the world and it's just phenomenal um i would pick somewhere tropical like Bora Bora, but I would love the number one place on my bucket list is Ireland. Ooh, cool. Hmm. That would be fun. fun just to go visit. I mean, it, it, it's just always been my number one. Nice. Amazing. Uh, to the rest of the patrol, do you have anything for, for Jacob? I had a question actually. Ooh. I, I would love to know. We, we talked a little bit before, before we got you here in the room with us. Um, we were talking a little bit about the, about the, arcane clues that were on the walls behind you and that were you know that Alex plane. was kind of yeah on the plane and you know on the walls and that Alex was kind of giving you a little bit of crap for having missed was that something that you knew to look for was that something you were looking for while you were playing the game no absolutely not had no <laughs> idea had no idea there was going to be clues and i just had this talk with pranav i said he may have been able to figure them out but someone could have straight up told me there will be clues in this game and i still wouldn't have picked up on a single one nope not at all they were so so small and just such little detailed clues th thrown into this game i would not have even you didn't know kazi's a zip code oh yeah yeah <laughs> they're like oh that was kazi's zip code i'm like i can barely remember my own zip code how am I like, my goodness, it was no, just those small details were ridiculous. Had you seen any of the original seasons of the mole either before you were contacted or after you were cast on the show? No, I had never even heard of the mole. And they brought us into this show as the cast with the premise that the show was called the insiders. Mm -hmm. And the very first interview um, producers come out and say, we've been lying to you. This is actually a known show that you're going to be on. They said, do you have any idea what it's going to be? And I'm like, Oh my God, am I on the bachelor? And they're like, no, Jacob. It's not the bachelor. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm like, okay, what is it? They're like, it's the mole. And I'm like, cool. They're like, what you've never heard that? of it? I was like, I've never heard of it or seen it. I said, hopefully I'm good at it. We'll see. But it so it wasn't like until you were there. You were there already when you found out that it was the mole? Or at what point in your casting process did you find out? 
Yeah, they didn't tell us till they started filming. Um, wow. It was it was the day before the jungle. Before we didn't even meet each other until the jungle. That was legit, one hundred percent accurate. When we, you see us going through the jungle, and introducing ourselves, that was the very first time any of us have ever met. And then the day before, or maybe two days before, we were doing our intro interviews, where you know you see me get on the screen, say, "I'm Jacob. I'm a firefighter paramedic. Never left the country before." That was the very first interview we did there the whole trip and that's when they told us it's not the insiders it's actually a tv show called the mole and i'm like cool what's the mole incredible um jacob it's been such a treat to have you here spilling the tea on on the mole it sounds like you've been having a blast interacting with everybody and, and getting to finally uncork this thing i can't imagine having to sit on this since 2021 yeah. it's a long time that's a mm. really long haul it was yeah a very long road i'm so glad i get to open it freely and share some tea i'm sorry i was late to the show though guys i hope uh, everybody got to ask their you're questions in demand and... people have <laughs> They're, you know, feeding you with grubs and all sorts of other delicacies. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm out there lying about my witch tea grubs and uh, accidentally, not purposefully, throwing missions, you know? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, <laughs> where can the people find you if they don't know where to find you on the internets right now? Oh, my goodness. Um, Instagram, Twitter, those are your best places to find me and connect. I've been talking to pretty much everybody who sends me a message. It takes a lot of time, but definitely get a hold of me on Instagram. That's the number one. After that, come find me on Twitter. We'll talk. Amazing. How, how tight is the cast after the show? It's a great question. We all stayed in contact from the minute we left until right now. I mean, it's wonderful. We're all in a group chat together. We talk all the time. It's We are a very tight-knit group, you know, that's what really sucks about the show. That's probably my biggest issue is that they didn't show a whole lot of character development or us having a good time, laughing, having fun. You know, we were always sitting down at those elimination tables, but beforehand, what they don't show you is that was what we called family, family dinner. Mm -hmm. We would all sit down, have a meal together. Alex would ask us questions. We'd laugh, we'd cry, we'd fight. Oh my goodness. And so the cast is still super tight. We all get along wonderfully. Yeah. We for sure thought you all hated each other. So this is really nice to hear. <laughs> It looks like it, doesn't it? It really it does. sure looks like it. It sure does. I'm uh, hearing that Jacob agrees with what I was saying before he got here, Rob, that we what? saw some character development, but that I wish we'd seen more of the uh, relationships between the people. Yes. Mm -hmm. Some more yes. hang times. Pranav hit this really good in one of his interviews I heard. Um, the cast, you know, we all got along great as a group, but we did have our select people that we would hang out with all the time and that the crew that the show would interview us with, you know, I, we all know Pranav and Avery were Hank, were good friends. Me, Casey and joy were really tight and we would always be on camera together. You know, Will and Cassie were super close, ironic, but they were <laughs> always, you know, hanging out. So we had so many friendships and so much fun that you didn't really get to see. I would really like to see Netflix put out content of just behind the scenes or extra missions that didn't get aired or just, here's the cast in their natural light. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that we're all hoping for something like that. I think they clearly have the footage if they want to cut something more together. Seems like people have come out for the mole. So hopefully when they've heard uh, the vocal response to the show, we might get a little extra something. Would you do it again? Would you play the mole again? If you were asked gladly, you know, my main goal, a lot of people were struggling and, and bringing this up in Twitter that I have an IMBD page and I'm, an actor and a model. And so they were like, Oh, he's, he's the only actor. He's a, he's the mole. And so this was a big break for me. You know, I've done a lot of print work, a lot of short films, and then the mole came along for Netflix. And I was like, absolutely. Um, so beggars can be choosers, whatever comes my way, I'm jumping at it. Jacob, would you play yourself in the movie adaptation of the mole? I would love that. Or would There's you want to play better a different to play cast it than me? member? <laughs> Say that again. Would you want to play a different cast member? Oh. Ooh. Would I play Jacob or would I play someone else? Like you could be Will. You could win this time. I would and love to play you get Will. A cool wig. Yeah, like I would love Targaryen. to play Will just to make fun Some of him. Some Targaryen hair. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That'd be all right. I'd, it would be fun just to put myself in his shoes and make fun of him. Yeah. I'd be. Oh, that'd be hilarious. Yeah, he would be fun one to play. That'd be good. That'd be great. Uh, <laughs> 
All right, Jacob, we appreciate you swinging by so much. The chat is so thrilled that you came through. This is such a treat for all of us. Thank you for taking the time. Absolutely. It's been wonderful. It's been an honor. I'm so glad you guys reached out to me and I got to come and chat. If anybody ever wants to chat again or have any questions, I'd be more than happy to jump on with you guys. Incredible. Great. Thanks, Jacob. Yes. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you so much.